Hello, What's good guys, it's the Girl Facts. Hope you guys are well. Today we have a special guest all the way from Namibia. He is a fashion designer, an entrepreneur and a model. And you might recognize him on Young, Famous and African season two. I am joined by the one and only Louis Munana. Hey. Hey, 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 Fats. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? How's your morning been? Came to the gym. It's been one of those Fridays, you know, like lots to do. So that I get the gym out of the way. I just finished mm. my session. Now I'm speaking to you. After this, I, I'm on the grind. Back I to love work. that. Yeah. How's your session been? What did you, what, what did you work on? I worked on my chest and... <laughs> The hey. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weather like in Namibia right now? Um, it is hot. The sun is out. Well, mm. right now we are in winter. Um, winter starts in May, goes until okay. May, June, July, until August. But it's it's warm. It's still winter, but it's a warm day. Like it's a warm winter. Yeah. Amazing. I want to say massive congratulations on season two of Young Famous in African. I've watched the whole season literally within a day. And we have oh, something wow. to talk about. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> now, if you had to use three words, three words to describe your experience on Young Famous in African season two, what would it be? Um, real, number one. Oh. Drum dramatic and revealing real dramatic and revealing those are the three words i would use interesting now yeah. of course we all know that you know you was introduced to us um that like, probably introduced to us and to the group on champagne night what was going through <laughs> your mind when you know you was there at champagne night and things mm -hmm. took a turn and things kicked off as well and like, what was you thinking to yourself in that moment? Like, have, what, like, what have I got myself into? Like, I don't know if I'm ready to be in the group. Like, this is messy. Like, what was going through your mind? You literally just said everything that was going through my mind. It was, do I really want to be here? Um, these people are fighting in front of a stranger whom they, they've literally just met and they're swearing at each other and fighting and cursing. So do I really want to be here? So I was like, mm, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. So. <laughs> That's exactly what was going through my mind. <laughs> but you've been on Big That's Brother crazy. before as well. So like you've been on reality TV show. Like was you thinking, yeah. like, oh, this possibly could be like smooth sailing. Like did yeah. you expect like drama coming your way? This is, well, Big Brother is different because you don't, you are competing for a price. Like there's a cash prize at the end of the show. That's yeah. number one. Number two, you are interacting with people from different countries, so so you do anticipate different personalities. But these are celebrities, these are stars, like who've made it in Africa. So you expect a level of 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 decency, or at least for the first time when meeting someone. So yeah. I didn't think it would be that chaotic. So yeah, <laughs> to be honest, I'm being honest right now. Did you watch the show beforehand before you went onto the show? Nothing at all. Oh no! Oh no! Season one. I did watch season one. I watched season one. Um, oh, okay. But it's different when you're filming and different when you're watching because you are there in the moment and everything is happening. So you're like, okay. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's just different. But um, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, well, other people's welcoming wasn't as bad as mine. So I expected mine to be, you know, good. You know, So yeah. at least a high, you know, like acknowledge a person in the room. So that's mm. why it's it's a bit like it was a bittersweet moment it's very interesting because you seem the type of person that you don't like drama you don't like mess you're a calm guy you come with peace and then yeah. here you are it's in these situations you don't know what to do <laughs> imagine in the deep end literally sink or swim that's it nothing more nothing less <laughs> you all know that in the season you and bonang clashed watching mm -hmm. it back and watching everything play out on the show do you feel like Swanky was one of the main reasons why you and Bronan clashed because of the way the information was given to her? Look, my thing is, despite what somebody else tells you about mm -hmm. another person, when you yeah. do meet the person, you need to don't take everything that's said to you in, on face value or at face value, rather. 
uh, that's what I don't do. I don't judge people based on what somebody else has told me about them. I don't take things at face value. I will meet you. I will speak with you. I'll sit down with you. I'll, I'll get to know you by myself before I make any judgments or before I make any calls. So um, regardless of what Swanky said or what Swanky did, I feel like as a mature adult, it's also mm. your responsibility to sit and listen to a person, understand where the person is coming from, and then make an objective decision. Don't go by what somebody else has told you, because I mean, we've all seen the show, like things, things, there's always broken telephone at some point, and, and, and we don't know what somebody else's intentions are towards you. So no, I don't, I don't want to, I, I want you to come to me and say to me, this is what I think of you. This is what happened and so forth. But don't come to me based on what some, um, based on something that somebody else told you. It's not fair, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Would you say that Swanky lied on you even though he knew the truth but still proceeded to tell her completely different just mm. to stir up the drama? Look, I don't know what conversation was had despite uh, the one that we saw on camera and so forth. Okay. I don't know what else was said. I don't mm. know um, where all of this is coming from. So I, I cannot speak for Swanky. I, okay. I don't speak for anybody else. All I know is what came to me, what I got, you know, so, so I can speak on that, but I can't speak on anything else here. Yeah. A lot of the viewers thought that the way Bonang came at you was a bit disrespectful. And obviously, even though she kept saying that, you know, he was lying, she didn't remember, the receipts don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> the receipts one don't thing, lie. <laughs> one thing about me, man, I don't lie like that. And one thing about me, there are always receipts. I mean, who goes on global TV and lies on someone like that without receipts? I mean, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> You know, I was so happy when the receipts came out. I'm like, oh, thank God. Oh, boy, can breathe because the truth is out. And I'm like, dude, you just look stupid now because it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, I, was, I was so relieved when somebody went to dig up receipts and they found the receipts. I was so relieved because the now, truth literally came out. So Yeah, because I, I remember yeah. seeing it and I was like, oh, my God, finally. Like, yeah. finally out. <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, yes. Yeah. yeah God. The truth always comes out. That's one thing about life. The truth comes What's the out support been like another. so far with everything? How are you finding the it's feedback been, so far? It's been, um, for me, the feedback has been overwhelming because yeah. I have people who relate to not being in contact with their family for years. So mm. this is people people from a, from a church background, like somebody got pregnant out of wedlock and the kids are out. Um, there are people who came out because of due to their sexuality who got disowned, who don't speak to their family, they relate to me. There are people who 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 just fell out with their family because of one or two reasons they're relating to me. There are people who are also in my same position, who are also from the same organization that I'm from, who've also been excommunicated, so they're also relating. So so to me, that is the why, because I was questioning um, my participation on the show, I was like, but the show is messy and dramatic. That's not who I am. What, I'm, what, is, what is my why? What is the purpose of me being mm. on the show? So now I think, I think based on the report, on the response that has been answered, like um, that has been revealed to me, like, dude, you are there to serve a purpose. You are there to mm -hmm. remind people that they are not alone on this journey. They are seen, uh, their feelings is valid. There's somebody else on a public platform that's going through exactly what they're going through so they they are not alone yeah that's amazing and you can tell from everyone watching the show like the viewers one of the things that the viewers admired and loved about you is your authenticity and like the fact that you're so open and vulnerable um and of course some people could relate to your story as well what advice mm. would you give to the people out there in terms of like not having the support system in terms of like situations like that or they're experiencing similarly what you went through? Like, what advice would you give to anyone that doesn't really have family around? I would say to them, they need a support system because what has kept me sane is my work. Like, I, I'm, I obsess with work. I, everybody knows that, Louis. For me, I throw myself 
deep into my work. Um, I'm obsessive with work. I, I go hard when it comes to work. So it's, it's, it keeps me sane and it distracts me from all the noise. It distracts me from everything else that's going on. And of mm. course, having like close friends, you know, pe- uh, people that understand your situation, people that know, like, for example, when, when Mother's Day comes up and Father's Day, when it's Christmas and birthdays and all of that, um, because they, they know that everybody on the socials is, is posting happy what, 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 happy what, 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 and you're in a position where you can't do that. So mm. they just give you a call like, yo, dude, are you good? Um, let's, let's just go out and watch a movie mm. or something just to distract you from all of this. You know, there are people that are there that, that, that analyze what's happening in your surroundings and they take that and they, they see you. So it's important to be seen. So yeah. find a tribe. The tribe is very important. Yeah. Amazing. I love that. So, of course, going back to um, what we were talking about earlier, Obviously, now that the truth has come out, do you yeah. see that? Do you see that Bonang perhaps will apologize? And if she does apologize, do you see yourself, you know, having another sit down so you can just squash things? Where where you where you at with that situation? Oh. I don't know. Um, I was I was gonna want. I was willing to sit down with her if she had just insulted me you know mm. because it's fine you can attack me all you want you can do whatever you want to me it's fine i can handle it but mm. don't come for my people don't come for my tribe don't come for people around me don't come for for for, for my country that that's just low that's below the belt you know what i'm saying so yeah. because of that uh it's very difficult at this stage for me to say that i'm open to do that um because i feel that some type of way now it's 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 a thing of where's the humanity in you where's the, the human in you that has the decency to to listen to someone when they're trying to apologize? I'm, I'm not saying say everything is fine forgive but don't now come and add things and insult and insult and insult and insult other things that aren't part of the discussion it doesn't make sense so it's very difficult to say right now um right now uh, it's a no i don't think i want to because you showed me who you are. You you've showed me your your true colors. So I'm very wary of you. I prefer you on that side, and I'm and I'm on this side. You know. Um, and the worst part is, yeah, no, I can't tell you this. It's fine. Yeah, what I'm, you I'm very tell us? Way, what you tell us? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not gonna mention that. It's 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 too it's too much. So, is there anything <laughs> that happened on the show that we didn't see, good or bad? Not on the show per se, but off cameras that that got me wanting to leave the show even more. Um, oh, that made me feel like I wasn't welcomed in South Africa. That made me want to leave because I, I started to feel unsafe in South Africa. I started to feel like, um, what if what if I wake up and, and there, are, there, are, there are cops in front of my door? What if I wake up because it, it was it was a very it was very traumatic, I won't lie. So in terms of what, in terms of, of what that, was going on on the show, I can't speak about it. Um, it's something okay. very sensitive. So okay, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Now, other yeah. than all of that, where are you at with the rest of the cast? Like, are you, have you made friends with the other, um, with the other cast members? Like, what, what's 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 been happening recently? To be honest, um, I I didn't know some of the cast members felt that way about me. I didn't oh. know they said that about me because again, I watched the same time as everybody else watched. Yeah. When the show dropped. I saw I saw what everybody was saying in their diary sessions. I saw what what you know what I'm saying. Like there was a lot of shade thrown for no reason. Um, someone is coming and you're meeting them and you're saying things about them. Like you know what I'm saying. So it's very difficult. I'm the type of person who opens up and once I let you in, I let you in. Once I once I love you, I love you. You become family. So when I say something to you and, or, or when I give something to you and you take that and I don't know if I'm making sense, but no, I'm you very are. wary you are. with where I stand. Yeah, with where I stand because I didn't know this is what was happening. I didn't know um, some of the things I said 
was twisted. I didn't know that's how some of the people felt about me until I watched the show. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay, this is, it's, it's crazy. Because I, I've watched over and over again. It was maybe one out of 10 times that I would say something bad or shady about someone because I, I respect everyone. But then again, I do understand um, the premise of, of, of the group that I'm in and, and, and who the people are and all of that. So I shouldn't take it to heart per se, but I'm an empath. I feel everything. So, so for me, it's very difficult to just, oh, you know what? It's just like, get over it. Like, it's very difficult. It takes some time. So mm-hmm. right now, I'm keeping to myself. Um, uh, except for Zari, I'm, I'm in close contact with Zari and Andile. Um, but everybody else, it's very, it's very shaky. I don't know. Um, I don't know, to be honest. So would you say that the dynamic of the group so far with, with you and the group is a bit of like, it's like, it's half and half. So you get along with some of them and just others, you just, you just keep in a distance yeah. basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, um, Nadia, for example, is someone that 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 i would i would um just send a hey like hey how are you doing like message and i would do that occasionally with the whole cast you know like mm. hey what's up how are you doing how's how, how are things in south africa or how are things in whatever country you are like i'm that guy you know um, mm. even if you don't say something or reach out i'm gonna reach out and just check in you like oh yeah happy new year merry christmas you know what i'm saying like i'm that guy so um but now it's very it's very shaky right now. Like I'm just gonna keep to myself for now and and, mm. and and see how things go, see how I feel. Interesting. Is that the same with Swanky as well? Because I know that you and Swanky squash things. Um, like where where are things at with that? Because he even came out to speak on the situation with the shady t shirt and he said that there was more to it than that. Like you guys had a one on one conversation that didn't get aired. Um, okay, we'll, we'll circle back. Let's circle back to this question. So much has also happened on the show. Do you feel like the show for this year's season has been, I don't know, like, um, kind of like it has been kind of been more dramatic than it was last season. Like there's been, a lot of the cast have been talking about like edited scenes and how the scenes have been cut out. Would, would you agree the same thing for you? Or do you feel like you like the narrative that was played out for you on the show? Um, how do I say this without shooting myself? I feel, I feel as though there was more story. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, there was more story to be told. I feel as though there was more that could have been done um, to better tell the story, but yeah. uh, because of the, the time constraints and because because there's there's seven thousand hours of footage and only six hours made it, so I do understand where the editors are coming from to say that they had to compress it. But yeah. In doing that, some of the story, some bits, some little pieces of information also um got lost in in translation but but that is that's unfortunate um but at the same time there's only so much editing you can do if you said something you said it you know what i'm saying yeah if you shaded someone you shaded them if you if you acted a certain way it's it's what you did it's just cut it short it's just compressed you did do those things you did say those things perhaps um the argument comes in to say the context of the scene or the context of the of the situation some of the context was taken out to compress the context to make it fit in an episode or a scene that's another debate for another day but i will say that there are things that i did there are things that i said that didn't Mm. make it onto the show that that i would have loved for it to be there but at the same time i do understand that there's only so much you can do with a cast of 14 people and you have a 40 minute episode there's only so much you can do you know so yeah they had to do what they had to do yeah so other than 
the other storylines on the show you spoke about how you wanted a baby through surrogacy is that something yeah. you still want yeah. to happen where you guys where, where you at with that like are you still moving forward with that no definitely that is something that that i'm still going to do mm. um i'm still i'm still going to do my research i'm still i still i still definitely want to do that because um i am i'm, I'm accomplished i have money i have assets i have property i have the fame i have i have what it takes i have the love to give i have the means but mm. my only issue is i've been i've been unfortunate when it comes to love you know because of because of what i have and who i am it's very yeah. difficult to find someone who's who's just as genuine because mm. now you don't know do you want to date me for what i have and what i can give you or do yeah. you want to date me because of who i am you know um yeah. and then then people say oh just date someone who's in the same who's also in the limelight and i've tried that three times and it hasn't worked out because dating a fellow celebrity is is, is people might think it's the easiest thing but it's 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 the most difficult thing you can do you know mm. so at, at this point i'm like you know what relationship or not i'm just gonna go ahead and 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 you know get my kid so why not i have nothing to lose i, I have all the resources i have all the means to do so so why not just do it yeah. interesting because the thing is like for some for some of the ladies <laughs> out there you've got the full package like I, I wanted to ask them, like are you currently single are you currently in a relationship like i bet like ever since the show has been out like the dms have been popping <laughs> off like uh, <laughs> i am the DMs have definitely, I'm been definitely popping going off, on dates they? i'm Sorry? definitely going on dates let's just i said i'm definitely going on dates <laughs> oh okay can you hear what anyone I'm that we're so, anyone that we're aware of anyone that we know <laughs> blue ticks look at look out on the socials <laughs> oh. but i'm going on a few dates um, i'm going on a few dates just to see what the vibe is but yeah uh -huh. after the show aired i'm like okay i'm gonna go on dates uh, just to see how we're feeling each other so yeah <laughs> okay and how's it going so far is there anyone in particular has caught your eye I'm not gonna tell you that. Come on, Fats. Come on. I'm still talking via 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 DMs. It's not going to WhatsApp. So we oh. we still talking. So I can't disclose because if I disclose, it's like I'm jinxing myself or something, you know. But like I said, I'm talking to a few people. Just um, one 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 particular person. It's just um, I I I don't wanna um assume that we're gonna be together too soon. So it's like we're just yeah. talking right now. So I'm talking to a few people. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's one of them ones. Okay, okay. Uh, Are you? Would you say that you're the yeah, like the type yeah. of person that you love? Love. I love. Ooh, I love love. I I love love. I love saying I love you. I love cuddles. I love doing romantic shit. I love. I love love. I'm I'm that guy, and I want to be loved right back. I'm yes. a hopeless romantic. I I will give you the stars, the moon, the earth because that is what i expect from you so i will give it to you because that's how i want to be treated you know so love is the one thing that i love when's your birthday again are you are you a cancer are you are you a july baby i am a cusp so where cancer ends and leo begins i'm in the middle 23 oh, july interesting yeah. <laughs> yes yeah yeah <laughs> we love to see it well you never know. Maybe in season three, we might see you with someone, perhaps. Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we love that. Now I know this is a yeah. bit random, but on Zari's yeah. birthday, like, what was yeah. going through your mind when you were sitting, minding your business, and then you caught you was caught in the middle of the whole um, Andy Lay's mother to his children arguing back and forth and you were just sat there you didn't know what to do like what was going through your mind <laughs> i was just i was so confused because i didn't know um i didn't know um i i watched the first season but i didn't somehow i missed that part where where adela has two baby mamas Mm. And then I, I see Rosette, I see Seba, and I'm like, wow, these are beautiful women. These yeah. are actually very beautiful women. And, and, and I'm, I'm looking at them like, wow. So what was going through my mind was like, 
Adila has a type because these women are beautiful. Like, God dang. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, okay, there's a back and forth happening. So I was like, what? No way. He's like, why? That happened? We're like, no way. <laughs> So my mind was just blown. It was all over the place, and I was wow. It was it was quite revealing. Like I said, like a lot was revealed. Um, I learned so much, and it was just crazy. So I don't. Yeah, because you yeah. you really didn't know where, where to look. I didn't know where to look. I'm like what what? And every time I look this side, she says something. I'm like no ways. And then she comes and counts, and I'm like no flipping way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, other than the show, other than being a reality TV star, you're also a fashion designer, yeah. you're an entrepreneur, um, you're yeah. also creative director of Zoriel. Um, tell us more about that. Like, how did that come about? Because it's also, you're actually like in partnership with Zulu Boy. So how, how did that yeah. come about with that journey and that experience? So there's Zuriel and there's Razu. Ooh, okay. Zuriel is my clothing line. Mm. Azul is is my MCC, my champagne. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, which one do you want me to go first? Because I have like four projects that I that that I own and stuff. Or oh, which one do you want to know about? Whichever. Which one do you want to talk about? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Waka Waka Mu, um, Namibia's first animated cartoon show. Um, that one I started because of Big Brother Africa. While I was in Big Brother Africa, our first task was to create a pantomime, a play for kids. And since I write and I direct and I produce, I took it upon myself to write a script. Um, and then at the time, my group, the house was split in two groups, yeah? So yeah. my group was, was, was the underdog because we thought we we're going to lose. And this is only because... Um, you know, Nigerians and South Africans, they have majority of Africa. So once you're in a group with them, it's almost automatic that they would win because they're majority, you know? So the group mm. I was in had zero Nigerians, zero South Africans. So we thought we'd lose, or at least the team thought they would lose. I wrote the script, we won. And I told myself one day when I, uh, when I do a project for kids, I'll call it Waka Waka. So I came mm. home, babysitting nieces and nephews. They're watching cartoons in Namibia. And they knew all the songs and all the lyrics. So I told, I, I, I asked, like, how come we don't have our own cartoons in the country where people are speaking our languages? And, and then, I said, then they said, you should be the change you want to see. So I started the whole thingy. And then it, 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 it did really well. I mean, it's the first product to air in the U.S. It was airing in, in Canada, the Caribbean islands, you know, something from Namibia. So that's something that I'm really proud of. That's number one. And then Fashion Week, um, I started Fashion Week because my background is commercial modeling. I used to do commercial modeling while I was studying for my degree in South Africa yeah, in, in accounting. So mm. as I was studying, um, I needed to get cash, you know. So I would go, I became a model. And every time I come home to people ask me, like, what is a Fashion Week? Where are you going? What is this all about? So I started a Fashion Week in Namibia because we don't have one, you know. That's Fashion yeah. Week. <laughs> Fast forward, coming out of Big Brother Africa, um, everybody wants to style me, everybody wants to dress me. I was working with designers, and then I realized that I'm actually creating my looks on my own. They are just sewing and stitching. Then I was like, no, man, I can, do so I can do my own line because I'm literally dressing myself. So I started my own clothing line. That's how Zuriel came to be. Mm. And then what else? I talked, And then there's Razo, the, the other project. So Razo came about because... Um, I used to do a lot of, or well, I still do a lot of promotions for alcoholic brands that are not Namibian owned. So yeah. I literally make sure that these brands are making money out of Namibians because I'm marketing their brand. And then I ask myself to which extent, well, myself and Zulu, so um, we, would, we would promote these brands as influencers. And then we asked ourselves, like, at what point, at what point do we take part in the profit sharing? At what point do we start to establish our own legacy? Because now we're just making somebody else money. We are promoting their drinks and people are buying and stuff like that. So then we said, let's start our own drink, you know? And and mm. and, 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 and we decided to do a champagne because it's something like Jay, it's something that I love. I'm very, I'm all about that, you know? So then we said, okay, let's do an MCC because that, that is um, very premium. Um, in Africa, we are one of the firsts as well. There's only, I think, about two, two other MCCs in in Africa. Um, Bonang's MCC is one of them. 
some people oh, are insinuating that maybe that's why she, she felt a bit some type of way <laughs> because it's like oh there's another person on my leave who also has an mcc so i don't know there's a lot of theories going around about why she lashed out because she found an equal but anyways yeah so that's how the mcc came to be um and we became namibia's first black owned champagne in the country because everything is is white owned coming from outside you know your moet and chandong your milk to go um your congress and all these things so we have razul now so yeah amazing you know i have to say your fashion sense on the show was so unique and so different i was like i need him to star me at one point <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, you've done so many things do over the years. You've done so many things, you yeah. know, you've done commercial modeling, you know, um, yeah. you know, creating events, um, you know, you're a fashion yeah. designer, you've created your own brand that's doing amazing, it's so successful. What would you say Thank to the you. people out there that wants to get into the creative scene, that wants to get into modeling, that wants to become a fashion designer? What, what would you, what advice would you give them? I would say to them, um, when you are going into the creative space, it's a very difficult space to penetrate because number one, you don't really have government support in in so many countries. When you are a creative, it's it's difficult to start, or at least in the territories where I operate in. Um, so the consistency of it all is what matters. Because um, for Razul, for example, for the MCC, this is that Zulu and I have been planning for five years, five to seven mm -hmm. years. It's not something that just popped out of nowhere because we literally had to had to um, save and save and save. We had to develop the taste of, of the MCC. We had to, to make trips to the farm to understand the process, the great making and all of that. It's the same with, with Waka Waka Mu. I mean, uh, designing cartoons, creating characters, something that has never been done before in the country once you're starting it requires a lot of persistence. It took about three to four years just to just to start the process and get there to a point where you can actually create a product that you can sell outside of Namibia for it to exist, it's a big deal. So the consistency of it all is what people fail to realize. People wake up and they think, oh, I'm just gonna do something. And one year later, I've made it. No, it takes years to build. So your consistency and your tolerance and your level of endurance is very important. And with that comes your your tribe, like I mentioned, you need to have people in your corner that are going to be there for you when you go broke, when you have nothing, but they mm. understand the vision, they see your dream. So that's very important. Amazing. What is the creative scene looking like in Namibia? Do you feel like the creative scene is like moving or is it still still? Like, what is it like there at the moment in terms of the creative scene, in your it's, opinion? It's definitely moving. Um, before there was fashion week, people didn't understand that anyone can be fashionable. It was a thing of people needed permission to go out there and become fashionable. So mm. Fashion wasn't a thing, for example, you know. But because of the creation of fashion, people, people understood that there's a platform to dress up, there's a platform to look forward to, there's a platform where, where designers can show off their skills. So people come to these things now because it's, it's, it's fashionable, you know. Um, and and the and creativity at large in terms of music, in terms of the art, the directing, the film, and all of that, it's it's growing at a very slow pace. Um, if you were a baby, I would say right now we are in our adolescent stage. We, mm. we we've evolved from from the toddler stage to now adolescence. We're not teenagers yet, so that's where we are. It's it's moving at a very very slow pace, but it is moving. It's getting there. Amazing. So what's next for yeah. Louis? What what else are you working <laughs> on? Um, let us know. And I'm sure a lot of the viewers want to know, is there any chance yeah. we're going to be seeing Louis on season three of Young, Famous and African? <laughs> what do you think? Do, do you think I should go back for season three? Yes. In your opinion? <laughs> yes, I think you should. We love seeing you on our screens. So I think you should. Okay. That's dope. I will, I will think... Well, if they ask me to come back, I will see. I will consider it. Um, mm. I don't know, but Netflix Netflix can be very convincing with a bag. They'll be like, yo, can I give you a million dollars? <laughs> can't say no to that. <laughs> but, no, um, you can't. What, uh, what's next for me is I'm, I'm pushing my work, you know. I'm pushing Razul. So aside from it airing, I mean, not airing, but aside from it being sold in Namibia, 
I'm in talks with, with, with different people across Africa to see where we can sell it as well. Um, I want Waka Waka Mo to be turned in a Disney movie, for example, where kids worldwide can watch, can watch a Waka Waka Mo movie. So I'm working on that. I'm producing um, shows with my business partner, Maria. Uh, fashion, in terms of fashion, obviously, I would love to showcase um, on bigger runways across the world and not just in Africa. Um, and yeah, maybe maybe going to acting like a gig or two because I've never acted before for screen. Okay. So whatever comes, you know, whatever comes, whatever comes. So that. make a few appearances here and there. Like, uh, yeah, so I'm very rounded. I'm not just this and this and that and that because I feel like I shouldn't box myself. So okay. when acting gig comes, I'm taking it. Just pay me well and I'm good. So. Now, if you had to do a role as an actor what what kind of what kind of movie or show would you want to get into <laughs> i think wants to do stuff that will smith does because mm, he is my my inspiration when it comes to actors he's absolutely my my favorite actor so the type of of acting roles will uh, will smith takes that's that's what i would like to do you know he play he can play an action hero he can play a father figure he can play um, he can play a character that's vulnerable, he can play a villain. So Will Smith is my blueprint, that is who I look up to. So whatever role that comes, as long as it fits in that scope, you know, yeah. Hi guys, I'm so sorry, but literally the internet, the network there was really bad. And I don't know what happened, but he came off the StreamYard video thing and we literally like we we lost connections so um i'm sorry i don't have the last bit of the interview but literally was just wrapping up um and all i wanted to say to him was thank you so much for coming to our platform i really appreciate it i will be saying this to him of course with to his management and to him through email but i honestly from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for coming to my platform i really appreciate it and just sharing your story sharing your journey on everything the show your entrepreneurship journey your career and just doing major things um i feel so bad i did send a new link just for him to like jump hop on real quickly and just wrap it up but, but the fact that he took 30 40 minutes of his time to speak to me it means a lot um but yeah guys let me know your thoughts what did you guys make of the interview did you guys enjoy it thank you so much for watching the interview let me know your thoughts make sure you like share and subscribe make sure you guys follow lewis munana's page what he has going on his brand his businesses thank you for watching the interview i honestly appreciate it so much and thank you to lewis as well for coming to my platform once again and yeah make sure you guys subscribe to the channel make sure you guys show your love and support and make sure you guys show lewis some love and support okay and yeah i'll see you guys on the next video on the next interview bye